What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Nerdy Mark channel. I'm Sid the Nerdy Mark and today I have your review of season two of Castlevania. Castlevania is created by Adi Shankar and it is based off of the Castlevania titles Dracula's Curse and Curse of Darkness. The story follows Count Dracula Tepes, who is of course approached by a human by the name of Lisa. She of course wants to learn these advanced technology and advanced sciences from Dracula, who of course is a genius and also kind of sort of happens to be a vampire. He of course falls in love with this human, Lisa, and they get married. They do have a child, Alucard. Lisa is quickly accused of practicing witchcraft because of which she is burned at the stake and Dracula mourns his dead wife by committing human genocide. Because of this, Trevor Belmont of the Belmont clan, who has since been banished, he comes in to help defeat Dracula as his he comes from a lineage of vampire hunters. He, of course, enlists the help of the magician Sypho Belnades and the aforementioned Alucard, who is the son of Dracula and Lisa, to finally put an end to Dracula's curse across Wallachia. So this is primarily going to be about season two, but I did give you a premise of the entire story and I did want to touch up on season one for just a second. So season one, in my opinion, was more or less kind of a litmus test for the Netflix viewers. They wanted to see, oh, did we, do we know about this? Do we like it? Do we appreciate these things? Is this something that the fans might enjoy? And turns out, absolutely, a lot of fans really loved the Castlevania miniseries. That was only four episodes long, including myself. I binged season one in an entire day. I didn't even wait to, you know, uh, you know, savor it for episode for episode. I could have watched it throughout the course of four days, but I said, I don't, I don't care. I wanted to watch the whole thing. Um, I loved it. It was very engaging. You know, it got me hooked and it really did make me want a season two. So how does season two fare against season one? Well, Personally, I loved season two. I binged that in one day as well. I could not stop watching episode after episode after episode because it was just so good and it was so engaging. I think that there are a lot more pros than cons as we will find out in this series and I wanted to you know, definitely touch up on that. But real quick, kind of what's going on in season two, now Dracula kind of has an army of vampires and he has two forge masters who are loyal to him, Hector and Isaac, who are alchemists, and they, you know, reanimate the dead and bring them back to life so that, you know, the army is replenished and all that good stuff. Meanwhile, Trevor Belmont, Alucard, and Sypha travel to the old Belmont castle, go underground to find secrets of for defeating Dracula. So that is the premise of season two. Now let's talk about pros and cons. So one of the major pros of season two and the pro uh, throughout this series as a whole is the character of Dracula. He is a great villain. I have said this before and I will say it again. The best villains are the ones that think that they are the hero. They think that they're the good person, that they are actually meeting out justice or at least their form of justice. Uh, you know, And because of their actions, the world would what will be a better place. Dracula, obviously his wife was burned at the stake. She was killed by humans. And he thinks that the only way that the humans will ever learn is if they never existed. Because of that, he decides human genocide is the best answer. He even says in the game, What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you? That right there should tell you the thought process of Dracula and what he feels about human beings. He does honestly feels that we are the lesser race and if they're going to do something stupid like kill my wife, I'm going to kill all of them because doesn't that make a lot of sense? So you kind of feel sympathetic for Dracula, you know, poor guy, he lost his wife. But at the same time, the series does make it apparent that this is an extreme what he's doing is absolutely wrong, even though, of course, he thinks he's in the right. I absolutely loved, loved Dracula in this whole series, along with his two Forge Masters, Hector and Isaac, who actually have a very sympathetic background, and you really do kind of feel for them. So you kind of understand why they're joining uh, Dracula's side, because both of them 
while were ill-treated by the humans that, you know, they were associated with, because of which Dracula enlists their help, you know? And yes, they are humans. They're not turned into vampires or anything. I think this was a really cool kind of a thing um, where we see the human, some humans and how they agree with Dracula and, you know, they sided with him. And when they use their powers to, you know, help this man, what kind of devastation is meted out on society that's that was really cool which is why of course the heroes are trying to stop them and speaking of which i do want to get to my next pro which is his son alucard alucard is such a badass in this in the show i remember when season one dropped in alucard who has like half an episode in that season i was talking about how i liked alucard and the personal and one of the guys was like oh he's such a pansy and he's a whatever and whatnot i was like what are you talking about man he was only in half an episode he wasn't even in a he didn't even have a full episode to himself so i really think that this uh season kind of fleshed out his character a little more and hopefully that person has changed their opinion about alucard i really liked alucard and i kind of liked his interactions with trevor belmont and sifo belnades he shouldn't die yes fuck you I love how the relationship with all these three characters kind of evolves. Trevor is kind of a dick in the beginning, and then he starts warming up to uh, Saifa and eventually Alucard. In the beginning, they're just kind of together for convenience sake, but they kind of really form this, this uh, friendship, this brother slash sisterhood type of a thing, um, even though it is kind of implied later on that uh, Trevor and Saifa go beyond just being friends. I think that this was just a really cool way to bring these three characters together. So these next couple of uh, uh, points that I want to talk about are just kind of something that gave me a bit of a nerdgasm. And that was the final climactic battle scene. Not the one where they fight Dracula, but the final scene where Trevor, Alucard, and Sypha are fighting a bunch of a horde of creatures. They have this huge, huge fight in a huge hall. And guess what song is playing in the background? That's right, Bloody Tears. That was such an awesome moment. And of course the rendition was amazing. I loved it. So this was good, good stuff. I thought this was fantastic. It fit in really well with the fight scene and it was just good stuff. I mean, all three of these guys were, were able to show off how awesome and how badass they really are. Trevor using his morning star alucard who can use his ginormous sword and can transform into a werewolf and all that cool stuff and saifa just killing it with her magic just all three of these elements combined together just absolutely tore the house down for me i don't have any words to say i'm at a loss for words for the action sequences in this series. It was really good, even though, I mean, I felt like they were a little bit staccato at times. I don't think that it necessarily took away from, you know, my enjoyment of these scenes. I just wanted to point that out there. It's just kind of a minor nitpick that I have, which we'll get into a couple of those a little later. Another one I wanted to talk about, obviously, was the fight between Alucard and Dracula. They teased it for a little bit, and I was like, are these two not gonna fight? And then they finally did, and it was really, really great. I loved it, it was emotional, it was bloody, it was violent. Earlier on, we do hear, I think, Isaac, who says that uh, Alucard is almost as powerful as Dracula, and that makes a lot of sense, and you can really see these two just going all out. You can see these two just going all out um, in, in this scene where these two are fighting, the emotions are, are there and I'm just like, oh my God, it's a father and son fighting. And even in the, towards the end of the scene, Dracula cries and he sees a picture of Lisa and he's crying and he's saying, I'm killing our boy. And it was, I was like, oh my God, you know, and whatnot. But of course, finally, uh, you know, spoiler, I guess, Alucard does kill Dracula, you know, by driving the stake into his heart and whatnot. So that was pretty cool. I just love the emotional scene that was there. I mean, like the fact that Alucard was going to kill his father, you know, as he tore the stake off and he was going to go and drive it into his father's chest. Like you could see the emotion. You could see like the, the pain and suffering that he was feeling. But at the same time, he knew that if he did not kill his father, he was going to kill everybody. It was just a really heartfelt scene and I loved every bit of it. Now, unfortunately, I do have a couple of cons for this show. However, I don't, I think they're more like nitpicks really and not necessarily cons. Like they don't really 
take away from my enjoyment of the show, but these are just some things that I noticed that I felt could have been improved upon. I want to stick with the Dracula vs. Alucard. It was a great fight scene and I really, really enjoyed the tension between these two characters and the emotion between the two, but I felt that it was just getting hot but they pulled the trigger a little too soon, I feel. They could have waited a little longer before Alucard finally drove the stake into uh, Dracula. The season finale, in my opinion, could have been a two-parter. The penultimate episode is literally the fight scene where Trevor, Alucard, and Saifa are fighting uh, you know, over the theme, Bloody Tears, and then it goes to the Dracula fight scene. Personally, I think the Dracula fight scene should have been an episode on its own. It did not need to accompany that other amazing scene that we had. That would have given the fight a little bit more depth to it and a little bit more emotion and you could feel a lot more for all these characters, which you kind of do already, but I felt like you could have felt a little bit more with a full-fledged episode just for Alucard and Dracula. Let them air out their grievances and then start fighting and then let it come up to where they go to Alucard's room and Dracula's crying and says, I'm killing our boy. And then boom, Alucard drives the stake in. I think that it could have been much longer and it could have been a much better set up. But however, I did enjoy it for what it was. So I'm not gonna complain too much about it. But the one thing that I do wanna complain about a little bit is the character of Carmilla. <laughs> No, not Carmella, Carmilla. She, of course, is the vampire that comes in. She wants to improve the state of Dracula's army because apparently all of them are terrible. She could have been a much more deeper character. I think that they could have even spared an episode where she told Dracula her entire story. I would have been totally fine with that. Towards the end, we do have her talking to Hector, who of course does join her in her conquest of overthrowing Dracula. We get it that she wants to overthrow Dracula, become the new leader of all the head of the vampires and whatnot because she feels Dracula is old and out of touch. She wants to do a much better job as the head honcho of all the vampires. I feel that because they didn't have a thing to kind of flesh out her character. I mean, they do have one scene in the end where she kind of talks about when she got turned into a vampire and she killed the guy who turned her into a vampire or whatever, but it doesn't really do much for me. I don't know why she turned into a vampire. Why did she want to shed her humanity and become a vampire? None of that. I feel, and they tried to kind of compensate for it, for it by kind of making her, you know, a bit of a bitch. It works to a certain extent, but not in the way that I wanted it to. She had a lot more potential and I felt they could have fleshed her out a little bit more. I think that that's what's gonna happen because it looks like they are gonna get another season for Castlevania and it looks like that's where they're gonna kind of flesh out her character a little bit more. So overall, I thought Castlevania, the series, was fantastic. Despite some of the nitpicks that I had with it, I thought it was still a very enjoyable show. I would totally recommend it to anyone who is a fantasy buff, anyone who is a fan of horror, anyone who's a fan of vampires, anyone who's a fan of Twilight. If you like Twilight, you will love this because this is what real vampires are all about. Not some sparkling crap that you see when vampires stand out in the sun. I mean, if they stand out in the sun, they're gonna die. How, how does that even make sense? Anyway, I don't wanna, that's neither here nor there. I'm just saying, this is a fantastic show for any nerd to watch. Whether you've played the games or not, go check this out because this is exactly how you make an adaptation of a video game. As far as a rating goes, I am absolutely gonna give Castlevania seasons one and two, two thumbs up. <laughs> so that pretty much concludes my coverage of Castlevania. Let me know what you guys thought about the show if you watched it in the comment section below. Also, be sure to let me know what other series that you might like to see me review on this channel because I do want to do more of those as well, whether it be a TV show or an anime or you know an animated series like this one. Uh, let me know and I will do it or an animated film, whatever you want. I'll I will um, try to I will definitely consider it. So. With that being said though, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, follow me on social media, and tell your friends about the Nerdy Mark. Thank you all so much for watching, thank you so much for your support, this is Sid signing off, you guys take care, bye bye.